Remember that? Yeah. Okay. When is, when is, um, when is, uh, Laura and David think of it? Okay, we have, uh, last time we had a very fascinating topic. I think it was great. Never had um, really considered the issues there. This week, Tazria, is it a, tazria, a combination? Yeah. Mm. Tazria, it's all. Um, one issue in this topic that he has on Tazria is the miracles and the wonders which relate to um, this tzarat, this, these, these, uh, these blemishes on the skin, on the body, and the clothing, and the house. Right? There are four, there are three different ways uh, that things can become whatever you call tzarat. It's not leprosy, because obviously leprosy doesn't affect clothing, right? right. Leprosy doesn't make yeah. house. 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 So whatever it is, whatever it is, it's tzarat. And some people think, in fact, that tzarat is not existing today. It's a kind of a spiritual malady. Physical, it has physical manifestations. You can see it on the skin. But it is not uh, caused by some illness that we know today, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know that it was caused by any illness that was known then. Except that it's a problem. Except that it's a problem. As, many, as much as people okay. want to say that it is maybe a special Ill illness, what do you have to say? What's the challenge? Well, no, no, no. Yeah, but, but if I say it's a, it's, a, it's a... If I say it's a spiritual illness as a punishment for people, is it... Is it special case, right? Is it, 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 it does uh, Paro have tarot? I don't know. Did he, he doesn't, right? He doesn't. He doesn't get tarot. Would, 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 would Hitler get tarot? No, why not? If he's also got uh, some kind of a spiritual illness, no? So that works in Israel, in edits, or? Outside. So it seems like it only works in Eretz Israel, right? Because we didn't have Mitzorahim in Eretz, outside of Eretz Israel that I know about. But what about the, this, this, the wilderness? The desert? Was there any Mitzorah in the desert? Yeah, Miriam. Really? Miriam was Mitzorah in the desert. And there it looks like it is just a simple, a straightforward punishment, right? Uh, of a spiritual type, right? She did uh, talk. Uh, ill of Moshe, and therefore she was stricken with Zorah. So that would, that's what people usually suggest as the proof of what uh, Pinky said, that it's a malady as a punishment for people who say Lashon Hara, slander other people, or to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Bad. That's where they take it from. Now that doesn't mean that it's the only... I mean, uh, I don't, we, have an, we have an example of what it is in terms of Lashon Hara. Maybe it would happen to somebody who would steal something or whatever, right? But do, do you think it's a Jewish malady then? No, no but uh, Naaman had it. Who? Naaman. You remember the story? Naaman. Oh, that's what I was trying to tease out. I mean, Naaman is a uh, general uh -huh. yes. of, uh, of Sancheriv or, or a general of what? Sancheriv, yes. Some foreign king, mm -hmm. I don't know. Amon maybe, I don't know. But it, yeah, he had what the Torah calls Sarat in the Tanakh, and he comes to Elisha, if you remember, and he heard that Elisha is a holy man and he would find a cure for him, and he gives him the instruction to go and bathe in the Jordan, and he goes, and, yes. and of yes. course Elisha yes. is... Yes. Is in the Jordan, we've got, we've got much better rivers. We have a lot of rivers yeah. at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he... he Nevertheless, he goes. Nevertheless, he goes and he gets uh, cured, and, yeah. and it was the downfall of the Gay Chazi. Yeah, yeah, remember yeah. his servant who said, uh, How about some money? Yes. Terrible story. But, I mean, the reason I'm telling the story, I'm, I'm wondering about the story, is you cannot say that it's a Jewish malady because they call him a Mitzorah, right? Right. So, what the, the general of Amal is punished with Sarat because of some Lashon Hara, you know. You, we don't know. Yeah, we, well, no, that, that, that it's a mysterious. It's that, the only yeah. case that I know about that people can uh, can, can uh, point out to. Right. So, 
the Ramban says that there is a certain kind of a miracle that's involved in this whole business of this illness, and he gives you, I think it's a very interesting Ramban, it's worth doing. Then he's talking about why does a person bring sacrifices when he cleanses himself from Tzarat? Why not just go into the mikveh or something? If once, once it's healed, it's healed. Why does he have to bring a sacrifice? Um, Houses. Okay, uh, let's do the first one. Yeah. Yes. Let's do the first one. Let's do the first one. That's all. Uh, chapter twelve, of verse forty-seven. Forty-seven. Did somebody? Did I hear somebody walk in the door? No. Is the, uh, Why, what is it? Why? What do I hear? Birds. Birds. What? I heard the I heard, I heard the sound. Am I wrong? Mem, yeah, Yud, Yud Beit, Pasuk Mem Zion, he says here. Is there no Mem Zion in Yud Beit? I mean, I don't see any... I don't see any... No, no, I'm just asking if there's such a chapter. I don't know, I don't see it. Oh, you give us the chastika, the chastika. It's 13, 13 memzai. Of course, you're right. The first chapter, the other chapter doesn't have this kind of memzai. Sorry. Okay, so on the, on the Pasuk which says, all the way, first it talked about the mitzora of the person, on the person's body. Up to 47. Up to 47, it is talking about the human being himself. Now it says, vihabege. And the clothing, the clothing, which has a negatzarat and the clothing and a sheet and the wool or uh, flax and so on and so on and so on and so on, right? Gives you all of the rules regarding this sarat that happens to clothing. Well, of course, if you were to read the Torah for the first time, you are from Chacham already, so it doesn't have you surprised. Of course, the sarat is in clothing. But if you were to read this for the first time in your life, you would say, yeah, a person gets this, a person gets that, a person gets that. And then all of a sudden the Torah would tell you, and if you see Tzarat in clothing, you say, clothing? What, what, what kind of illness is there in clothing? Right? Do you, it, it would be strange. Mm-hmm. So the Rahman picks up on this. He says, well, how do, we, how do we explain this business of clothing? Right? So that's what we're about. So it's in page Ayin Hay in, in the, the Ramban's printing. On Bayikra. You see it? Ayin Hay? Not, not, not I, yet. You, I, I see it. you and I. Yeah, yeah he will find it, right? Pasuk 47 mm-hmm. in chapter 13. Do you see that? 47. 13, 47. Right. right. Now, by the way, of course, there is. Yes. There are. There are certain organisms that grow on clothing. Because they are no. It's not a. It's not a skin disease. But there are not so much on synthetics, but on wool and uh, cotton and flax. There are certain organisms, uh, bacteria and fungus, that actually grow on clothing. And destroy it because they grow on the organic material that's in the cloth. But in certain conditions, in certain certain conditions with mold and so like that, right? But we, we, he, to him, this idea that clothing would be. So take a look. I never heard of such a thing that this would be a natural thing, right? Mm -hmm. And the Rambam, as a matter of fact, also says he has a quote here and there, and the Kuzari. Yudah Levi, and this is what Yudah Levi says. Amar the, the you remember Yudah Levi in the Kuzari has uh, the king of uh, some important person who has this discussion with him about Judaism, right? So this Chaver is the Chacham. Uh-huh. This is from the laws of the powers of the Shina. It's allowed. Because this occurred among the Jews because of their elevated spiritual level in that would affect their body. 
מועילה אותם החיות האלוהית ונתנה להם זיו והדר בגופותם ובתכונותם ובמשכנותיהם. And when they were on its higher level, right, they got the Torah, they were high, elevated level people, then it would give them a special shine and glory in their bodies, in their clothing, and in their dwellings. A holy people, right? And when the Shekhinah would leave them because they would do something wrong, it doesn't matter if it was Lashon Nara or something else, if they would deter, they, they, they would repel the Shekhinah from being with them, then Right? And when the people, as a group, I don't know what it means. I think it, means, I think it would be meet stalleket, stalleket. But anyway, yeah, um, maybe it's weakened. Sikul, sikul, sikul. It's sort of like awkwardness or uh, uh, disability. Tiskul. Anyway, it, when the people would push the Shekhinah away, then as a group they would be lowered. But if it happened in a single individual, then he would be, it would be see, it would be visible right away from their, from on their bodies and in their environment to show that the Shekhinah was away. Now, the, by the way, what we just read is Yehuda Levi's description of what he thought of, of the, of the uh, Tzarat, and he in the footnote says that what we are about to read, you will see in a moment, that the Ramban seems to take that idea from the Yudah Levi. His language will be very similar. Let's see what I mean. What's trying to be said? That Tzarat doesn't exist today because we're simple people. But, but, at the time of the Midbar and after their coming into Eretz Israel, this was supposed to be a holy people. The Shekhinah dwells among them, right? It's in the Shemishkan, carries around with them every day. And it shows miracles to them every day. They had the man in the desert, and now they have this pillar of smoke above the uh, Mishkan every day, even in Eretz Israel, right? So, it would be that their, it would affect their nature, their look, their uh, body, for some reason, right? I mean, you have to, listen, I'm, I'm just telling you what he says, right? Their bodies would become more glorious. Their houses would be sort of glowing, and their clothing would be somehow perfect. Like the Torah says, you know, you travel for 40 years in the bar, and your clothing, your shoes never run yeah. out, and your clothing never wrapped out. Why? Because God was taking care of them and shows them his closeness all the time, right? The natural order, if you start walking, your shoes rub out, especially in the desert. How many shoes would you have to wear? Right? For 40 years, they didn't have. So that would be an example of what he's trying to say. But there, the presence of the Shrina was then with them kind of carried them in a different way. Right? In a different way. Like, so yeah. when, they, when they do something wrong, it's, when you're in the presence of the Shrina, there is a very, uh, what should I say, when you're in close quarters with the Shrina, then it's also a little bit uh, mm -hmm. both positive and negative. We've heard last week about uh, Nadal and Abiyu who came mm -hmm. in some way improperly, right? And it was dangerous for them, right? So, on the one hand, it elevates you. On the other hand, it's quite striking. And the, the Aron also. The, the Aron itself. Aron remember Uza, who was the Uzzah, 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 who pushed the Aron up as right. though it was going to fall. And the uh, other way, and the other is the uh, carry, carry, carry. The carriers of carriers, right? The Kohanim carried it, and they, they didn't feel uh, any weight. In fact, their feet were just above the ground. They were walking like they're floating. Mm -hmm. So. The effect of the Shekhinah being among them had an impact, right? And if you behave in such a way that kind of makes the Shekhinah distasteful, you distasteful to the Shekhinah, so it would walk away. And it wouldn't make you like any other normal person. If you're high up there and you come down, it's not the same as somebody else who's always been here, right? Because you have deteriorated from a certain position. Right? I mean, you could ask, so I don't have the Shekhinah, I'm not as holy as I was, so now I'm like everybody else. So what's wrong? I'm not like everybody else. It's not, it's not wonderful, but why does it have to affect me with Sarat? But he says, no, no, it, 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 it's an interesting psychological idea, right? Somebody who was 
great, who then becomes like everybody else, he is actually worse off. Right? A little bit unethical, a little bit, uh, he knows where he should be, right? He, he came from a high place, and he's come down. So the idea is that this would show something in terms of a negative impact. Uh, and it's true, I suppose. Yeah? If you see a great rabbi who's a very righteous person, and he, and everybody else doesn't even come close to him in knowledge and piety, right? And he gets corrupt in some way. And he cheats on his taxes, let's say. Uh, they catch him. So he might say, you know, so now I'm like everybody else. Everybody else cheats on their taxes. So, I, uh, so I'm the same. But, you know, people look at this, and they would say, this would be a negative impact, right? It would be something very distasteful. It would be something, oh, man, that to do this. For me to do it is one thing, but for him to do this, it's sort of like a chil Hashem. It's a, right, it pushes away the Shekinah much more. So he's trying to say that. Let, let's read the language, he says here, right? Also, not only clothing, he says, but it's, it's a wondrous that even houses can have this, right? But, when the Jewish people are whole with God, Shleimim, by the way, to him is not whole, but also at peace, together. Right, uh, shalom, remember? Shlamim, he says, I'll say Shalom, Shlamim is like, when I say I, it, people are on Shei Shalom, it means they are allies, they are uh, covenant people together, right? So not just peace that they don't have war, but Shalom is uh, something more strong than that. Shlamim Hashem, Yihiyeh Ruach Hashem Alehem, Tabi. The Spirit of God is on them always. And that has an impact. Which establishes their bodies and their clothing and their houses in a good look. So they're one. Good appearance. Now, you know, it sounds to me, I don't know how it sounds like to you, but it sounds a little bit radical idea. I mean, he's trying to explain Tzarat, but you mean to say that somebody who is uh, handicapped, uh, hunchback, blind in one eye, uh, ugly person who's born, he is not the holy person. He's not likely to be a holy person. And if he becomes a holy person, that he would somehow be of a great, beautiful stature. Do you think, Pinky? Uh, no. I mean, it, 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 sounds, it sounds peculiar to say this, that the physical appearance and quality would be related to spirituality. Um, sure, I think that we were probably on Shua ben Hanania was uh, known to be uh, ugly. ugly. Uh -huh. So, so it, it's a, that, that's what at, at first glance sort of startles me a little bit. Okay? So let's continue. One of them, uh, one of the people has a sin or a, or a transgression. It will cause a, somehow an ugliness, a, a, a deterioration in his flesh. Or it is called, or bibeto in his house. It will show that God has removed himself from him. Now, I want you to know, of course, the Ramban is going to say that this is a great reward. This is a great reward. It's a great miracle that this would be so. Because a person who would, whom God favors and whom God is very close, you do something wrong, he tells him. So that he will immediately catch himself and you do something, right? And, he, and it will be always possible for him to correct. Oh, oh I, I gotta go back, right? Because I've gotten the warning. You know, and that is a, to him, that's a great miracle, right? right? Because it protects the society, it protects the person. I want to be close to God. I made a mistake, I did something wrong. I, you know, if it wasn't for the Tzarat, I would, uh, you know, you get used to certain things. You, you do it a little bit not the way you should, right? So tomorrow you do the same thing, and the next day you do the same thing. After a while you get habitual, so I, this is what I do, right? But if you immediately get a response from God about this, then, uh, then it's quite uh, a favor in a way. The Tzarat is not nice at all, but the corrective, the effect of it is wonderful, you know, right? Because it will bring the person back. You have a very, very good friend, 
and you hurt his feelings, right? They'll let you know. Somebody else who isn't very close to you, so you hurt his feelings. He says, ah, he's a lousy guy anyway. What do I have to talk to him? I'm not going to tell him that he hurt my feelings. So he goes along right. And you go after a while, you get into this, you know, this spoiled relationship with people, and you don't even know it. How about the French shoulder of the head? I said, he, the, uh, I don't know, the, uh, for for the rain or uh, and his son. Yeah. What so what son? what uh, what did his sons do? I have no idea. It's a good question. Right. The people. The, the story of the four Mitzrayim who go out uh, outside yeah, the wall the and they go and they see Sancheres uh, camp uh, had run away. Right. And they come back and they tell the king about it. And at first they were alone. That's why they were out there by themselves. And Gehazi was one of them because he had. Uh, been corrupt in his Chil Hashem with that person, Naaman, so he was punished. Why his children? I have no idea. Somebody will tell you that the sins of the fathers are visited upon the sons. I don't get that, but okay, so, right? So that would be, would happen naturally when a person is so close to God that when he does some transgression, God would show it to him in his physical being. Uh, this right? warning, this warning is in the same level, in the same uh, speed to uh, Chacham and the same to the regular Jew. All the people were on a high level, he's saying. All Am Yisrael, Bihiyot Yisrael Shleimim Lashem. When all the Jews were bound up with God, God's spirit was with them always, and that's the way they were. So it doesn't matter that there was nobody, there's no learning for it. It seems like they all were special spiritual levels. Some people smarter, some people not, but the people connected to God all the time, right? This is actually, when God says, I will put a nega, a affliction of tzarat in your houses, it means God himself does it, right? It's, it's a God action. It's not something that uh, just happens. You know? And that it is an affliction of God in that house. What you said. It only happens in Eretz Israel because that's the holy land with the holy people upon the land, right? So it doesn't happen in Brooklyn. Right? It doesn't even happen in Muncie, as holy as Muncie is, right? Shehi nachalat Hashem, because this is the possession, the inheritance of God. Kemosha amar ki el Eretz Kedad, asher ani noten lachem lachuzah. The Pasuk concerning houses said, when you come into the land and you have inherited it, then I will sometimes put an affliction of Tzarat on your houses. So you see that when you come into your land, it's not when you, before that, it didn't happen in the desert. And after you leave Eretz Yisrael, it also doesn't happen anywhere else. And when you come into the land. There is another um, uh, function of Tzarat, um, uh, which is a favor to a, to a Jew, namely, if he had the, um, uh, 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 the rise in this um, wall, and he then but he takes the wall down, yeah, and it's, he finds he finds a a treasure. Well, that's a uh, that's a med, that's a spooky medrash, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, and so the Rambam doesn't talk about that so far, right? Yeah. Okay. This is not because of the natural result of the land being the land, right? There's something special about the land having having something to do with Sarat. It's because of God being present in the land of Israel, and therefore that he is dwelling in it. And if you transgress and you do something wrong, then Hashem shows it right away. Okay. But, 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 by the way, and that's why people say it's a little frightening to go to Israel. I mean, you're lucky you're not going to Israel yet, but when you become a pure person, that will be the time to go. Soon, soon. You're almost there, right? Because when you go to the land of Israel, it's not like being in Mansi, right? When you, because there's a holy place a little bit in Shul, and once in a while you could be with God if you are really concentrating. But in Eretz Israel, you're walking around. And you're in God's presence all the time, 100%. So you have to be much more careful, you have to be much more alert, you have to be much more inspired. You could be also very much more happy, right? But, but you have to be conscious. But we are taking this as a, as a warning for us, of, as a sin, say I committed. But Hashem said that attitude, I got to put a sign on the house that, uh, that before doesn't belong to me. So 
That's another another question. That's that's a sin, no? But no, no, it's not a sin. Oh, you mean what? That the houses or didn't belong to me before. Before, exactly. But, but I but belong to the house. Yeah, yeah, but now it belongs to you. Right, but I have not seen it yet. So the house is, is showing me, uh, the house is showing me uh, Sarat on, on the walls. So. No, there wasn't any Sarat on the walls before the Jews owned the house. You're right. I mean, there wouldn't be Sarat on the house while the Canaanite has the house. Uh, Only the, after the Jew got the house. Except the point of that bed. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, so I don't like that method anyway. I understand that say, you're throwing in a method say, that is isn't here. I'm saying that maybe this house was, was used to worship uh, idols. So what? Idol so, so what? So what? But now, well, no, the house itself, if it was used to worship idols, would be destroyed when the Jews came. They wouldn't, sit, they wouldn't live in a house that was a, a, worship, a house of worship for idols. Because that's not permitted. Or maybe they use something. A regular like, house. A regular house that somebody else owned. When the Jew then possesses it, or he builds a new house when he comes to Teretz Israel, right. then he is imbued with the Shechina. So, Dvorat Kamanim Darshu, Od, She'in Abayit Mitame Ela Achar Kibush V'chiluk. As a matter of fact, they said that even the houses that are in Eretz Israel would not, you ask the question, would not be Tame with Sarat, except after all of the conquest of Israel and after the, all of the land was distributed among the Shvatim. Meaning, it has now become the land of the Jewish people and with God, right? While they were fighting, it's not, it wasn't the Holy Land yet. Okay? After everybody knew where he belonged and what he had, right? That's when this Tzarat would come to be. At least in the houses. Then, when they had finally conquered the land and settled on it, and it was peace, everybody had his place, that's when they became settled in their minds to know God and that the Shechina will be uh, immersed in them or among them, right? Or whatever Betocham means, right? This is the same, he says, with clothing. Which would only happen in the land of Israel. So how do you like that? Right? We're imbued. Since they never occurred there. They never what? They never occurred. They never occurred there. Uh, never ever occurred there. Yeah. Well, I see, you never see Tzarat in clothing outside of the Israel. Also, it only happens in white clothing. White clothes. And not colored ones. Why? Right. Below, that's why we need because sometimes clothing, yeah, that's right. You know, cl color. He knew, he knew clothing. He knew colors of a certain type. But today we have dyes. That jacket is not going to fade, right? The color is going to stay. Your jacket is also going to stay colored. You know the whole idea of dyes. You should read the history of dyes of, of colors because it's a very fascinating history. You know what kind of colors that they have in the old days. They took it from vegetables, they took it from vegetations, maybe they cooked certain things and made a dye, but there were very few dyes that were permanent colors. Permanent colors. You put it on a piece of flax or a piece of cotton, and it would be there forever, like your clothing, like your dye over there. It was not impregnated well into the cotton. So he's trying to say that if you, if tzarat would happen in clothing, right, then you would not ever be sure if this was tzarat that God was sending aside, or whether it was a uh, fading little, you know, the sun, the so sun hit it, or uh, or he put some coffee on it and it changed the color. You know, I mean, uh, I don't know what's right. I know what's right. So, so he says that only happened in white clothing because white doesn't change, right, naturally, and therefore when you would get a blemish on white clothing, that would be God's sign. Right? It would be clear. That's what he's trying to say, right? Um, right. 
Ulai Hatzeva Hotzia Chilur maybe showed some ugliness because of its nature, just by natural things. Hulo Etzma Elohim, and not by God's finger, right? It wasn't a sign. Vichach Hatzovim Bigdei Bigdei Atzavim Kedivrei Rabbi Shimon Of heaven? What did you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Therefore, therefore, the man's colored by heaven. They are mitamim kedivrei Rabbi Shimon. So look, let's see, Rabbi Shimon. Wait, wait. So there are some clothing which are colored by God, what by heaven. What does he mean? Negaim yud aleph gimel. In some Talmud. Negaim. What do you mean? Do you know what he means by that? Kedivrei Rabbi Shimon. You see that negaim yud aleph gimel. If something becomes colored not by man who dyes something, but are colored somehow by heaven, by by by, na- by nature, they're colored clothing. I don't know what that means. What kind of exception that is, right? That's why the, it doesn't say beged, clothing, but it says the clothing, or the piece of leather, or the woven thing, right? Meaning that, that special thing that is miraculous, he's trying to say, all right? And then he says, and then he wants to tell you, just in case you want to tell him, didn't you hear of the other Medrash about Lashon Hara? Didn't you hear about the other Medrash about finding the treasures in the walls? Rambam? He says, yeah, I know there are a lot of Medrash. So I'll go, by the by, he says, yeah, yeah, you can, you can read other things, but this is what I'm telling you what I think. Right? There's a lot of punning in the Torah, shooting by the Torah. You want to tell me, it's not written in stone, so to speak. Sorry for the pun. It's not written in stone that Sarat in the houses was in order to reward them for finding treasures in the houses. I mean, that somebody made it up. Somebody has a measure like that, right? So he's saying, this is what my idea is. You could hear other people's stories also. So we can understand that in the case of Nama was only leprosy for self. No, the word, no the word, that is the difficulty. I don't know why he doesn't deal with it. Because, because it doesn't say anything other word. It says the word Tzarat in that type of passage, no? In Naaman. So, according to him, Naaman would have to be a holy man who's with God. Yeah. Who did something wrong that uh, God would want to show him that he is, has distanced himself from God. Now, that would be a peculiar thing, right? Um, yeah, but, but we have to see the, the answer of, of Elisha. Go and back. Go and do it. That is different than the Kohen. It's not the same. It's not the same, it's not the same methodology at all. Exactly. For the outreach. So what does it mean? How could he be afflicted? According to the Rabban, how could he be afflicted with this illness? Uh, good evening, sirs. Hi, hi. How are you? Um, so, I don't know. It's a good question. Maybe we'll ask Rabbi Dabi what he thinks about the Rambam and Nama. Mm-hmm. Because it's a good question, right? And it looks like uh, it's totally unrelated. Uh, seeing the, the answer, the, the medicine. <laughs> Well, well, Any suggestions well, about that? Well, Nama would undoubtedly have been a Russian. Had been an evil person. Right. And therefore, uh, probably deserved uh, to be a sort of reason. So, something. Right, but something. 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 But, something. But you think that he would be afflicted with mm-hmm. a particular mm-hmm. illness that God uses mm-hmm. particularly to reward people? To show them. them that they are distant from him, I mean, that would be a little peculiar, right? A given fit syphilis, I mean. Give him a shkin. But, I mean, but it was far day to him. I mean, there are all kinds of plagues that a person can play. He was also to bring it close. 
Sacrifice to God. You know, offer you know, give a lot of money or something to uh, Alicia to because he has Wayne or something. Yeah. And then uh, Alicia and she said, No way. She says, No, no way. way. I, don't, I don't take any money for this. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Remember, you know, what, what, what would I have done? What would I have done with Nama had Gay Khazi not? Yeah, maybe you would have converted. Maybe you would have become a great Sadiq. Or you would have become a Sadiq. Do you know some Nama descendant of Nama? I don't know. I bet you somebody talks about him. Uh, Who, you know who knows all this stuff is uh, Robert Schlesinger. He'll tell you all about Nama. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because all of, the, all of the mystical literature he knows very well. I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. You could write a book about Nama now, you know what I mean? Because if you have this story here, so he might, according to the Rabban, he would be sitting in Transjordan, right? And he would get Sarat, he would say to himself, if he knows the Rabban, right? He obviously knew the Rabban. That everybody knows that Sarat is a Jewish disease. And Sarat is a disease only for holy people who are here in the Shkinah. So he would say to himself, What am I doing with Sarat? I'm not doing it. I have nothing to do with the Jewish people. What am I doing with Sarat? How do I have to do You would have to think about it. I'm a goy. I'm a goy. I'm not Jewish. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a general in uh, this enemy's uh, army. I mean, it would draw him to try to understand what's going on. So he goes to the prophet, uh, not just to get cured, but he goes to the prophet and says, Elisha, I know that nobody like me gets Sarat. What am I doing with Sarat? So maybe when he sent him to the river, he sent him to the river to do Tzvila al to the mikvah. I mean, I'm just making it up. I mean, you can write a book about this, right? So, I mean, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. He's, he's probably baffled if he knows the Rabban, right? I mean, you don't have to know the Rabban. If everybody knows in the whole world that nobody ever gets Sarat outside of that area of Israel, nobody gets Sarat. If a non-Jew walks around in Israel, he never gets Sarat. Only a Jewish person gets Sarat. Only people who are with the Shkina get Sarat. So if somebody who is not Jewish gets Sarat, it would be like, it would be Guinness World, world Records. I mean, somebody would have to write up in the newspaper. Okay. Big, big, big uh, headlines. All right. Sarat found in China. What is it doing there? Right? It's not good. So forget, forget uh, uh, Nama uh, and talk about Miriam. So that was outside Eris Israel or not outside? Because said, we, see, no. we, see said, no. we see the limits. We see the limits that could be Eris Israel and Pasinai. When in the desert, they were at, at, at this moment. Like, yes, what is Miriam doing there in Sarat? So it would be a special case. Right. Miriam and uh, Aaron and Moshe. I don't know. I can it's speculate. Like, the, these rules that he's talking about are, are uh, ex with the exception, would be Nahman and would be Miriam. Both are questionable how that could be. Right? Mm -hmm. But he says, by the way, that he says that houses and clothing would only be in Eretz Israel. Did he say that about people? No. Because he only mentions this. Lo amar v'tuk natati negat sarad v'bayit Eretz Yisrael v'imakat Hashem v'bayit. 
ואין הדבר מפני היא אותו חובה קבעה, וכן נדר הבתים. אבל בהיותם ישראל שלמים להשם, רוח השם עליהם תמיד, ואני תופם ובידיהם ובבתיהם במראה טוב, כאשר היא כרגע אחד מהם חייב, ועבון ידבר כאילו בבאס ארץ. He, uh, he would have to tell you what he needs to say is when they came into Israel, that's when the houses and even the clothing would be afflicted. But before that, people who are with the Shina, the Shina came to the people, they would have possibilities of getting Tzarat even in the desert. Themselves, on the butt. On the butt. Not quite, no. Where maybe it was not. Where, where Miriam got Sarah, it was not Eretz Israel, right? it was on her body. Wait, no. No, no, no. But did you see the limits of the Eretz Israel in the beginning? I think this section, because it's close to the river that we suppose as the, the, the Nile, it's not the Nile, it's the river that Ramad says. It's, there was a river that separated Egypt from Eretz. And not the, from there, who said? Where did so, it go? No, we talk about the river that most people get uh, confused with the Nile, but it's another river. I don't remember this. And that river, that river is it's down Gaza. Uh, it's the limit to Eris Israel and Egypt. Because you remember, the limit of the north is up to where it's here as it's right now. I don't know what you mean about this river. I don't, I don't remember this. I don't know where you got it. So you really see river? that Mount Sinai is not in the place that regular people know that it's down mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the peninsula, but up close to the sea. Remember, we, we, we talk about it. Where but Sinai, it's Sinai. But Sinai, Sinai is not an Eretz Israel for sure. Yeah. Our Sinai is not an Eretz Israel for sure, right? No, 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 no. Not. I don't know. Listen, I, I don't know what to say about that. But I mean, it could be that the bodies of people who are with the Shkina could have Sarat even when they're not an Eretz Israel. Although, I don't know, it's a little confusing, right? Habagadim and the Batim, he says. The houses and the clothing is only in Eretz Israel, because that is somehow related to the land. But, I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know. But why he doesn't talk about Naaman, I do not know. Okay. So, so far you've got that, right? How are we doing? 720. Do we have anything else we have to do? Um, I'll tell you something which uh, might be a little distasteful, but what is what is the tuma, what is the uncleanliness of a menstruating woman? You want to do that, Rabban? In our Tazuya. Right? It happens to be in chapter 12, verse 4. Chapter 12, verse 4. I'll tell you here something that you see from the Rabban's medical knowledge of the day. Medical knowledge of the day. What does, what does uh, chapter 12, verse 4 talk about? That a woman who gives birth, remember, has certain uh, uncleanliness and cleanliness periods, right? And what is this uncleanliness of Midah? of a menstruating woman, or a, or a birth-giving woman. So he says in the Ramban, which you have to skip a little bit, it says, page Samach Hei, by the way, to Vav, Anachon Beinai, let's see, it's a Pasuk Dalet for Anachon Beinai. Ah, the last line in the page, Anachon Beinai. You see Samach Hei? Last line, Anachon Beinai. Ki Haisham Bimei Riyata, a woman who, uh, it, it, it seems to me, right, it is correct in my eyes, it's about halfway down the paragraph of verse 4 in the Ramban, more than half, no, no, not quite halfway. It's, uh, uh, the woman in the days of her menstruation is good. called Lida, Shunet, because she was avoided by, by and kept distant from all people. Yes, that's right, why, yes, go ahead. Men and women would not 
approach her and she would sit alone and not not speak with them. Not speak with people. Because what, what is the Nidui, uh, the word Nidai. It was today, well, yesterday was 15. Today has been the day after 15. That is Monday, the day after 15. So do something without a brother. One more than 15. Good, going. The Yashavit Badad, she speaks, she's not alone and doesn't speak with others, people, right? Because her speech was considered by them impure. Even her speech. Right, go ahead. And they regard the dust upon which, the dust upon upon which, which she walked. Stepped to be impure as the dust of the discomposed bones of the dead. Right, go ahead. Our rabbis have mentioned this. Her, her gaze was considered harmful. Even her look to see you, to, to, to look at you, right? And I have already mentioned in this uh, there by Yetzi, Yaakov. So this was the custom of menstrual, menstrual strength to sit in a special tent, this being the intent of Rachel. Remember when Rachel said to her father, uh, forgive me father, I don't get up from you because I'm here with, uh, you know, I have this condition, I'm uh, menstruating, so I'm lying down alone Lord, in my tent. Yes. Go ahead. I know my Lord the enemy that I cannot rise up before the, for the manner of woman is upon me. Yeah. Since it was the custom that a woman in that condition should be walk nor let the sole of her foot step upon the ground. Whoa! No, we don't have any of that. Go ahead. That was in their day, yeah. Go ahead. That is why the Torah was more restricted in regard to what the man's one sits upon or sits lies. Or lies upon. More uh, than... It is for the person who touch them and his darkness are rendering pure. That we respect not to touch him. The menstrual In which case, the person himself is rendered impure, but not his garments. Correct. Go ahead. Generally, scripture says that in regard to the leper, he that shall, is the mitzvah, right? He shall dwell literally sit alone without the camp shall his dwelling be. And we not say as it be in the case of other or the other impure person, and he shall go out of the camp. He shall come within the camp. Rather, the mentioning is mentioning the term sitting, meaning that he is to avoid walking since his odor and bread are harmful. And it is for this reason that the teacher says there here that for another thirty three days she shall sit in the blood of purification in the same place where his, uh, she sat in the seven days of impurity and count of the childbirth and future uh, prohibited by means of a negative command from touching hallowed things or hallowed things and not to come into the coming into the sanctuary right. during that time. Yeah. The rabbinic interpretation the rules are follow. She shall continue in, in the blood of purification for three and thirteen days. It's something to a woman in car labor during the 11 days that she she be pure from Siva, the law of lust. Siva. I might think that he should also be regarded as pure from the impurity conveyed through menstruation. As in the days of the impurity of her sickness, shall she be condemned. So, and uh, yeah, this is not the Ramban I was thinking because it's very complicated. <coughs> no, this is not. This is not what I. Uh, okay, I mean, I thought he was going to explain it a little more why this is so. Okay, no, no, I don't have anything to say. About it. I don't have anything to say about it. Uh, 
said no. That's right. Yeah, the book is all yeah, I mean, in their day, they thought of it as a, as a harmful, dangerous, uh, putrefying thing. I mean, amazing, no? Don't you think it's amazing? Please, rock, please, please, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, he, 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 he implies again that he will teach the halakhos of Nige Batin in the Bible, but it doesn't happen until the time of So, Okay, because the Torah says, Kitavo el Arts, right? Kitavo el Arts, there it's not. Not here. And of course, you could say that they lived in tents and suppose so it's not too likely to happen. It's not a fight. Anyway, he says that it's only there. Oh, no, this is Nikkei Fatim we're talking about. Oh, Nikkei Fatim. No, no, he does. I don't know, that, but that wasn't the Jewish law there. Like, she's talking to her father. Rambam is trying to illustrate that even in other cultures, it was considered to be a, uh, you know, whatever. Okay, a person would be isolated, would be alone, would talk to people, their breath would be dangerous, they wouldn't walk on the ground, they would, they would be isolated and completely apart from people. So if that's nonsense, why do we have the halakha be there altogether? Why is that considered too much? Because we have a certain slight tamsik of that which they had. That's a good question. I don't know. Obviously it's a hoax.